Hi everyone, this is Intro Stats with Matt Tu Show, and today we're going to look at an, an example of an ANOVA hypothesis test. So in our last video we kind of looked at uh, how an ANOVA hypothesis test works and what's the assumptions and what are the um, what's the test statistic and today we're going to kind of get into an example and kind of work through it a little bit just so you can see how an ANOVA works and what kind of data we're using etc. Alright so this is one of my actually one of my favorite examples of an ANOVA it's uh, some data from Australia so they took um, some random samples of people living in uh, Australia and they asked them what state they lived in and also what their salary was so we have their salaries in dollars, I believe, and then we have the state they lived in. So like we mentioned last time, an ANOVA test is a categorical quantitative relationship. Here's the categorical data set, the state the person lives in, and then the quantitative data set is their salary. So the question is, is salary related to where you live, to the state in Australia that this person lived in? Um, or are they not related? Okay, well, again, what we kind of learned last time was if they were not related, if it doesn't ma then it doesn't really matter what state we live in, and we would expect the mean average salary for each state to be about the same. So our null hypothesis would be that mu1 equals mu2 equals mu3 equals mu4 equals mu5. Basically I'm comparing the population mean average salaries for Northern Territory, New South Wales, Queensland, Victoria, and Tasmania. And if at least one is different, so if we have different salaries, the average salary is different in at least one of these states, then maybe it does matter where you live in terms of what uh, salary you can get in that state. So that would tell me they're related, right? That's kind of how, how an ANOVA works. So this is the classic ANOVA test. And this is what I was actually referring to in our last video, how we have the raw categorical and quantitative data set. These two numbers, these came from the same person. This is sometimes referred to as an identifier. Each number has a word next to it explaining something about where that number came from. This person lives in Northern Territory. And this person right here lives in New South Wales. And this person right here lives in Queensland and so on. But what we also want to do is we want to sort of separate, separate out the data. So um, one of the things we do is we want to sort of break up this data into what state um, they come from. So if you, um, if you actually, you can actually use the custom sort button, which I've kind of explained in the past. If you highlight both of these columns and sort them to a custom sort, so I'll go uh, the home, here's custom sort, we'll go to sort and custom sort and um, you can actually go ahead and do that um, then the you can sort just like that looks like it was giving me a little trouble so I'm just gonna make sure I highlight it so let's try that again uh, home sort custom sort there we go. And we're going to sort by the state in Australia. Okay, the state in Australia. Um, there we go, just like that. And what that's going to do is it's going to put this, the uh, states in, um, in uh, order. Now, um, I, since I didn't highlight my title, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck this box that says header. And I'm just going to tell them to sort by column A, which was where my now what this is going to do is going to put them all in alphabetical order, but it's going to keep the connection. So now New South Wales is first, Northern Territory second, and so on. It put them all in order. Now I can copy all the people's salary from New South Wales, just like that, and put them in right here where it says New South Wales. I can put all those numbers in this data set right here. And I can go here and highlight all the people that were in Northern Territory and put them in their own data set. It's just an easy way to separate your data. Some computer programs require the original quantitative uh, and categorical data. Some uh, computer programs prefer the data to be separated. 
So you do need to be comfortable kind of going either way. Uh, in this case, stat Cato prefers it being separated. Stat Key will per, uh, prefers the original categorical and quantitative data and wants to separate it itself. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. All right, so let's let's look at stat Cato first here. So here's here's my separated data and here's my raw data. We're we're not actually going to use the raw data. We're going to use the five separated data sets. Now, if we go ahead and look at those, we're going to go ahead and down to do an ANOVA test. You go to statistics. Now, most of the time when you're doing a hypothesis test, you go to hypothesis test, but this is a very special one, so it's under analysis of variance. If you remember, that's what ANOVA stands for, right? Analysis of variance. And then we're going to click on one-way ANOVA. We're only doing one-way ANOVA. Uh, two ways are more complicated. So today we're just doing one-way ANOVA, so we're going to go statistics, analysis of variance, and then one-way ANOVA. Now the computer's going to ask you where your separated columns are. So you basically just want to tell the computer where your columns are that are separated. My columns are in C1 through C5. So you can do them one at a time or you can actually um, go ahead and push the control key down on your keyboard and you can highlight all five of them at once. But you got to push this add to list. So you can either add to list separately or do them all at once. Just click add to list and they're just telling the computer what columns you're separated quantitative data is. Now I'm going to go ahead and pick a significance level. So I'll, I'll choose 5, 5%, 0 0.05, and I'm going to push OK. And there we go. We got our 5% significance level, and this is called an ANOVA printout. And it looks almost identical to almost every computer program that you use that's going to calculate an ANOVA. They're going to give you a printout that's very similar to this. Now, what are these numbers telling us? Well, it's like all the numbers that we were explaining in the last video. Here's our F-test statistic, right? We said the F-test statistic is the variance between divided by the variance within. This MS, mean sum of squares, is the variance between. So, this is, this is the variance between right here, this number right here. This MS is variance. So variance, this is between the groups. In fact, they say treatment or between the groups right here. And error or within the groups is right here. So this is the variance between the groups, and this is the variance within the groups. Notice they're very big numbers. Remember, when you add square stuff and start adding it up, it can get very, very big. So these numbers are very, very large, and that's not surprising. The key is when we divide them, right? If you divide these two numbers, we're at under MS, that's how they got the F-test statistic, 7.92. So basically, the ratio of the, sum, of the variance between the groups to the variance within the groups is 7.92. But actually, that also tells you that the variance between this first number right here is actually about almost eight times bigger than the variance within. Okay, so these two numbers here are just telling you how they calculated the F-test statistic. What about the rest of this stuff? Well, this is actually how they calculated these variances. We said the variance was the sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom. Now, if you notice, if we're dealing between the groups, there's only five groups, so the degrees of freedom would be four. Okay, so, and then they, they basically, this number here is taking each, each number, uh, each mean of uh, the mean, sample means from each data set, subtracting the mean of means, squaring them, and adding up all the squares. Now we have the variance, uh, the variance within is calculated from the sum of squares within, degrees of freedom within. That's this uh, 170 right here. So we had five data sets of 35. So that's 175 numbers. So that means the total degrees of freedom, notice, is 174, which is 175 minus 1. Okay, so now, but if I look at the within the groups, each data set, so the first data set had 35 numbers, so it had 34 degrees of freedom. The second data set had 35 numbers, so it had 34 degrees of freedom. Third data set had 34. Basically, you're going to get uh, five data sets, all of them having 34 degrees of freedom. If you add those up, you get 170 degrees of freedom. That's where they got this number here. And again, what we saw yesterday is the degrees of freedom between plus the degrees of freedom within equals the total degrees of freedom. 
And same thing with the sum of squares. This is the total sum of squares, and it's broken up into sum of squares between plus the sum of squares within. So they're just kind of giving you the numbers that are used to, to check this F test statistic. But again, when it comes down to it, what's most important is knowing what does this test statistic actually tell me about the data, right? What does it tell me? Does my sample data disagree with the null hypothesis? Well, the critical value is 2.4248 right here. That means, remember, we talked about last in the last video that this is a right-tailed test. So the right tail begins at 2.42. Well, then where does my F test statistic fall? Well, it's much bigger than 2.42. It's definitely in the right tail. So that means that it is significant, right? That's our golden rule of test statistics. If our test statistic falls in the tail determined by the critical value, then the sample data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis. Also, we can see the p-value here. This p-value is written in scientific notation. 10 to the negative 6 just means you're going to move this decimal 6 places to the left. So we basically got five zeros before the seven, so point zero 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 seven zero three, very close to zero. A lot of computer programs actually would just would just say that's about zero and call it a day. Again, we have a very low p value, so it's unlikely to be sampling variability. All of this is telling us we should reject the null hypothesis. So remember, the null hypothesis was that the the categorical and quantitative data are not related, right? So if I reject that they're not related, I'm also supporting the alternative that they are related. So it does seem the, the, the sample means uh, for the different states do s tend to be significantly different, and that indicates that the, the city, or I'm sorry, the state in Australia a person lives in is actually somehow related to the salary. And that kind of actually makes sense when you think about it. But this is giving us some, some evidence towards that now. Now, let's take a look at, um, at StatKey now. If we were going to use StatKey to do this problem. Now, for StatKey, we need the original uh, quantitative and categorical data, so the not, not the separated data. So I'm going to go back to the Excel spreadsheet here. I need